Hey photographers, it's uh, John here and Matt. How's it going? With Nations Photo Lab, School Prints by Nations Photo Lab. Yep, Pounds Labs. Pounds too. Labs Definitely. and MVP Labs. The MVP workflow is uh, awesome. If you want full service, quick plug. That's right. Get you don't out want to of do it. any of the work. Yes, uh, get out of the doing photography work. part. Go full well, service. Do that. But that's the work you like to do. Right. Get out of the work you don't like to do. True. But if you are going to be more hands on, then this video is for you because today we're mm -hmm. talking about using QR codes. Yep. Really important piece the of the workflow. Yes. Um, and in a previous video, we talked about the different ways you can capture images and data. Yes. And QR codes was one that we kind of touched on, yep. but we didn't really get into the meat of it. Right, because there's so many different ways you can capture the data. data. Yep. Um, but name of the game always, we've gone over it in that video, uh, probably other videos too, that you really, you really in the volume space, you want to be associating your images with the school data or the league data. Um, in the field if you can. Yes. Because what we just talked about with the MVP workflow, you don't want to be doing that associate, association in the office because you are not, you're not making money. When you're sitting in the office doing all of that, you're sort of spinning your wheels when you sh could be out selling yourself, getting new business, yeah. and taking pictures, which in the volume space, taking pictures equals dollars. Exactly. So using a system like QR codes or some sort of scanning system mm -hmm. will set you up for success when it comes time to placing the orders right. and tracking the orders and things like that. And I think there was a specific uh, QR code platform you wanted to talk about today, yes. correct? Um, so a lot of people don't realize uh, that Rose mm -hmm. has a pretty sophisticated QR code system built right in. Right, Rose. I didn't know that until yeah. you know I came to work here and we started talking about it. I know you're a big proponent of Rose. It has definitely has its application. It does some cool things. And one of the coolest things that I never knew about, and I used Rose for a decade, so what you do is you go into rows and you're going to actually create subject cards in rows. You can customize them based on the type of data that you need. Right. And when you go in there, you'll see what I mean. You can actually create a custom one with whatever fields that you'd like and there's already default ones in there. So right. what I mean by that is if you have data from, let's say, the school or the league, mm -hmm. that data can automatically be populated into the fields on these um, right, you can pull cards. in uh, student name, student name, grade, teacher, student ID number, anything that um, can help you out in the field when you're working through, because you may want to use these cards to update data. Yeah, um, we've talked about blue cards and generic cards before. Yeah, so once you create the cards, then this QR code is associated with that data from mm -hmm. that student, so it knows that the information that's in this QR code is yep. is that student ties back to the data. Ties back there. to the data, and so the point of that is that. When you take the picture of the student, and we'll go over this in more detail, yep. they're going to hold this up, kind of like those old, uh, what do you call them, slate cards. Right, we're going to hold these up, and you're going to take a picture, and once you take the picture, mm -hmm. that QR code is associated with whatever images you take thereafter. Right. From a workflow standpoint, usually um, the people that use QR code workflows, uh, if they're shooting on a tripod, they'll just hold the QR code in front of the camera, take a quick picture of the QR code. Um, so they get a nice, you know, frame the full image with it, mm -hmm. so you, you can clearly read everything. And then any image that comes after is associated. That way the kid can be setting, getting set down, yeah. and you've got it taken care of and out of the way. That's a great option. Let's say that you don't want to give the cards out to the kids. Mm -hmm. Then you just have to verify who that is that you're photographing, make sure your yeah. card matches that person. Yeah. So that's true, because then you could have more control over... Uh, seeing the QR code and actually that would be even more important mm -hmm. there's another level of this that I think we'll leave out for today yep. but you can actually make an order form out of this per se so you can actually yes. unlike a, almost like a Scantron form you can create it so it's like A, B, C, D all your packages mm -hmm. okay. and then whatever is packages filled in add-ons. the package that's filled in Rose will actually read that data yep. and information so not only is it matching the kids it's even adding that if you want to take that extra step to yeah. offloading you know, instead of Entering packages into rows, events, mm -hmm. once you come or back, yeah. or having it go ahead and, and pre-enter for you, and then when you're using rows, events back in your studio, you're just verifying data at that point. That's, exactly. that's what you're, that's Making the whole sure purpose of this, yeah. to offload the matching, all yeah. the images line up, and then if you want to go that extra step, add in that uh, package data, then you're just scanning through, making sure your crops look good, and pushing submit. Mm -hmm. You've saved hours. Exactly. Uh, so it's pretty powerful once you get in there and see how it works. Uh, just hearing us talk about it, it doesn't do it justice how quickly and accurately this can actually mm -hmm. uh, create an order for you and keep your data and images organized. Correct. So I guess, you know, maybe we talk about what that looks like in the field. Like I've talked about it briefly, but Matt, like your experience in school and sports 
Yeah, you want me so. to sort of do a high level quick walkthrough of it? That would be First thing you're going to do, you're going to go to the school, you know, a couple of weeks before the shoot. Okay. Um, hopefully the school is organized and you can say, hey, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Registrar or decision maker, I need student data. So we need first name, last name, grade teacher that they're coming down. Uh, with for photography and maybe student ID if and you're doing some service items. Those are the, the five that you need. Okay, so I say it again, say it one more time. The five that you need are? First name, last name, teacher, um, or period if it's a secondary school and they're coming down by a, a certain period, um, grade. and grade. Uh, grade. Grade and student ID, so those okay. five. Student ID can be, yeah, that can be helpful for yep. sure. If, especially in secondary schools, uh, a lot of these schools now, a little segue, uh, you're pr providing uh, service um, exports back to them or service items to them, uh, like the cumulative fol folder stickers. A lot of schools still do. Um, a lot of that is usually associated by student ID numbers. Okay. So that's it's good to have in your data set if yeah. you ever need to produce that stuff. But what you want to do also while you're requesting that data, it's ideal to have like an Excel file. Yes. Oh, if you want to sure. uh, a Not little next level, go ahead and tell them how you need it. Yeah. Don't. Uh, my experience, um, especially if you're in a um, if you're covering a larger territory, uh, different socioeconomics, rural, urban, suburban. Um, all these schools have uh, different levels of expertise in their front office as far as technology is concerned, They're using different platforms. Um, I've had schools, uh, honest truth, print out the data, scan it back in into a, a flattened PDF and email that to us. That doesn't uh, sound seems like a lot of work, yeah. but that's how they did it. Um, and really all all these platforms can produce a CSV, right. text, uh, you know, a Commodore limited text file, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, all those different versions. That's what you need. And we got to the point where we were asking schools, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Registrar, hey, it's that time again. We need the data. Here is a sample That's a good idea. Um, spreadsheet of the columns that we need. Um, can you provide it in this format for right. us? So that way they're not just saying, like, oh, and clicking any export. They're like, oh, well, they need first name, the last name, CSV. grade, uh, teacher, yeah. student ID in .csv, .xls, and like, okay, let me go find that export. It, it, it it's, you know, it, it, those little things sort of add up when, um, you know, if that saved us, um, say, two or three percent of our schools sending us the data wrong, yeah. that, that's minutes and hours of time spent uh, saved. So. Or if they, if you just kind of didn't really speak up and you just let them give you whatever, yes. they give you a Word doc or something, then all of a sudden you're, you're doing data entry or you're importing right. somehow They're, really. That PDF yeah. I referenced, yeah. that took us taking a, um, bringing in a technician, paying them overtime to stay, to stay do, late, just type. typing in that data for right. the picture day coming so up. So ideally, I would think, and this is a big assumption, I'm going to go on a limb and say that the majority of schools are going to have PCs. The majority of schools are mm -hmm. probably going to use some sort of Microsoft-based program, which means they could probably most likely have Excel, which means they can get a .csv file out of Excel. And there was not an application yeah. we came across that couldn't do that. Yeah, so any type of, if they have some school administration software that's proprietary to, for schools or something like that, mm -hmm. that obviously can also export out yes, an Excel file. That application is doing the same thing. It's working with student data. Right. You, we talked earlier about those service items. Yeah. A lot of those service items are providing exports back to them okay. that they can import into that software they're generating the data out of to begin with because they want, uh, you know, small images of the kids associated with them. And, and so, so the takeaway is that the schools, if we're talking just schools right now, they should have the data that you need to create. Yes, and they have sent it to your us. File in rows. Yeah. And so we're ready for the next step. So and then and also on a side note, sports might be a little more difficult. So we'll have to talk about that separately. Yes. But what's the next step? After so we get the data. We've got the data back. We're checking it, verifying it. If there's any formatting we need to do, we go ahead and clean, yes. clean it up. Um, you know, there, there, there's times where, you, okay, I need to concatenate here, I need to run uh, capitalization macros, anything like that. Just, mm -hmm. we, we got into the habit, I think it's good practice, um, to always clean up your data and make it consistent across the board. Absolutely. So it's following the exact same um, uh, format. format. So if anyone gets their hands on it, they know the dirty data versus the clean data. And we did we did that as well. We would have here's the the original the, the, the original data folders. Always keep the original. That's actually a good example. And uh, then point. we had the cleaned up data that we would be ingesting into our platforms. Yes. Yeah. We we weren't using Rose Events, but it's the same concept that yeah. you, you would have the clean data ready to generate. 
your codes. I want to mention one thing here about keeping the data consistent. The uh, ro rows is going to show you what headers and the format of the headers, which is really important. Yep. So the school is not going to provide you with that same format. I mean, that's just we're not asking to do that. So when you get the file, you'll just know that in rows you need to rename the headers. When I say header, like first name, for yep. example, will be like all one word. That's just how it's set up in rows. So right. you'll just make those minor changes. It takes two seconds to just read. And that saves you that that few seconds you did in you know pulling up Excel or Google Sheets, making those changes, it's easier instead of doing that in rows events. Yeah. Remapping. Yeah, it's better to do that because it'll pre-map for if you. If you make a mistake or something, then you're like trying to figure out where the mistake happened. It's better to just kind of get all that stuff out. And of you get in that you habit. Get. You get you follow those little little best practices. You shave time. You shave time. You get more efficient. Yep. So the next step is we're gonna generate our camera cards. You go into rows and click on events mm -hmm. and then you create your you create an event. Let's right. say it's you know uh, ABC High School. ABC High School. That's that's my favorite and school. Then <laughs> you go to the subject cards and rows and you create the subject cards that uh, by importing the data that right. you and, now receive. And this is a product, correct? Like this is a product and it's it's a it's, there's no cost. You actually print this is a, a product that you print at home. Mm -hmm. So I just printed these on regular you know yeah, you can do four ups, you can do two ups, depending on what you're doing. Yeah, rows gives the option for that. If you're familiar with rows events and, and mapping to, like creating memory mates, mapping data, same yeah. process, it works just like that. So first, so you take the, the template, and we'll probably show this on a screenshot, you take the template and you drag in the header mm -hmm. and in, into here and you write first name. Then you drag into bracket, the, the header. Open bracket, last first name. name right. Bracket. So it's just going to say first name, last name, and then whatever other data you want, you would drag in from the header. And mm -hmm. then once the... Uh, file gets mapped with the cards, it automatically populates the actual data yeah. and creates these subject cards. At which point you can then save these to your computer and print them out mm -hmm. at, right after you make them. It takes like a minute to make them. So now you have, uh, I cut these two, I put four up on a, on a page. I recommend and cut getting them. in that habit too. Cutting them? Uh, uh, printing them right away. Printing them right away. And probably print if, if you want to get, um, uh, I recommend cardstock. Okay. I mean, if, if you need to scrimp and save, you know, Go yes, you can, you can print it on regular copy paper. Cardstock gives a little, uh, little more strength, costs a little bit more, but the kids are going to be hard on these, right. especially at the elementary age. True. You um, don't want so them bending them in half. And yep. And like if that. you need to write a note like, hey, David actually goes by Dave, you know, little details like that. That's true. Um, or a change to a student ID number, all those little details. <laughs> also, what I should mention is that you can actually print them in sequence too, which is really cool. Yes. Um, so don't worry about that. Sometimes I've had photographers worry that these won't be in sequence, but Rose has that option. You just check a little box and they're right. in sequence. Right, so that way when you cut them, you know, they're sorted by teacher. And exactly. Because like, that's, we, we've had that conversation before, a uh, stack sorting. You could sort them by teacher, mm -hmm. you could sort them by That name. way when you slice them up, you're like, oh, here's my, yeah. here's Miss Jones, here's Mr. Jones' class, and you're good to go. So now you have your cards, and you're ready to go to the shoot. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the shoot, what are we doing with these cards? So, yeah, you've got your workflow set up. Uh, as we've discussed in earlier videos, you're going to probably have these sorted out by teacher. We'll say we're in, um, well, we're at ABC High School. Yeah. So they're coming down by history class. So I've got my history class periods all sorted out. Uh, Mr. Jones first period history class walks up. I say, hey, Mr. Jones, here is I a stack pre of pre-sorted. Pre pre yep. Could you pass these out to your students? Because he knows who they are instead of me standing around saying, you know, Call David, Sally, you know, sh right. shouting out and trying to wrangle a bunch of ninth graders together. Let, let him handle that. Uh, you know, we've talked about it. Recruit the teachers. So he passed them out. They get in line. As we talked about, um, depending on how what you're comfortable doing, and, you, know, you walk up, you greet the kid, you take the QR code from them. Right. And so I've got David's here. I have the camera. Snap a quick picture of this full frame or best as I can, so I get a good read. Then I I have a little box on my side table, face down, so we keep them in order as our secondary backup. Good idea. Right. So you get your QR codes, but you also have sort order for a manual match if something happened to go wrong down the line. So then the kid sits down. I take as many pictures as I like. This image, any, here's my image of the card, and then any, any image of David, we'll go this way. Would be associated. Would be associated with this in the software. You could also, you know, as we talked Until about Until you a take a picture of the next. Of the next one, yes. So then William comes up and we wash, rinse, repeat. You could also have them sit down, hold the card. You could do that as well. So then you've got positive ID 
that okay, David's I like holding that David's card. Personally, but. Um, but it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, be because you, it could be the students. If they're rambunctious, then you're trying to. True. You're, you're taking one extra picture and then having to go around and grab that card from them. Um, I'm I'm of the mind of greet them fast because I'm used to um, using uh, regular barcode camera cards. Right. That I walk up, I greet them, I take the card, and I scan it right away. Okay. Um, versus a, a slower process. Sure. But that that's just my ha um, habit that I got into. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, each what of them works has for you. Pros. It depends on the type yep. of shoot. It depends if you have help at the shoot. If you have someone as a yes, helper. Yes. If you there's a lot of factors. If there. you have a helper, that. Changes you know, all. That changes all because the, then they're taking the card and they can hold it up and you can snap it real quick and then they're working together. They could probably right. even enter the JPEG number so, of, uh, yeah. just for verification or maybe they, they know which one they want to choose. At some mm -hmm. shoots, you might actually choose it at the shoot. I don't know how if everyone does that, but that's probably, yes. that can happen. Um, or writing, if depending on if you want that third level. Yeah, you write down. You write the JPEG the on the back, the, the sequence with the JPEGs on the back of this. Okay, so now you finish the shoot like you would normally do a, one mm -hmm. of these shoots. Um, got your images on the camera, you've yep. got your stack of QR codes that you shouldn't have to reference except to identify uh, the generics. So, you know, you've got, and we can cover generics later, um, it, the kids that you did not have in the data set. Okay, I got you. Oh yeah, you might, so you might want to bring some blanks with you too. Mm -hmm. And you um, can generate those. Yeah, so generate some blanks, that's a good idea, great suggestion. Um, so bring some blanks with you just in case. And so when you're finished the shoot and you go back and you're ready to start ordering, you want to bring all the images in and you want to load them up on the computer. Yep. Then once you're in rows and you've imported the file, yep. the data file, you've imported Data's the data there. file and you've imported the images, then there's a matching process that happens. Right. And rows will actually understand that these QR codes are associated with that student. And that's when, and the, it's that's awesome when the magic And it's awesome to see when it all happens. lines up. Yeah, it lines up perfectly. And you you start scrolling through um, the data in rows of events and you see David's barcode, his images, William's barcode, his images, and everything. Yep. So you don't see any kids accidentally associated with anybody else. You're like, yes. Yeah, did it perfect. Right. And that does happen that there's like, sometimes the rows won't understand it. Maybe it was on a bad angle or something like that, which you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Then you have the opportunity to make those changes. Yeah, it's you just really drag easy. and drop, rearrange, and yeah. it's, it's quite easy. So we'll have a separate video that takes us through the entire detailed tutorial, mm -hmm. but this was more of the purpose of explaining what a great process this is as one of the many workflows you can choose from. Yeah. And I think this is one of the best out there. It's especially the, if you're starting out. Especially if you're starting you need out. To, you, you know, you got Rose Events, absolutely a great place to start um, and can really get your help you get your foot in the door so you can look the part of a volume photographer. True. You, you know, instead of going out, investing in software. Right, and I think that a good point is also if you're just starting out or you don't have a lot of shoots, it's free. You know, it's Rose not. is completely free, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So if you're already ordering from us through Rose, this is a no-brainer. If you're new to... Yeah. Got a um, dance, a dance, dance studio. Definitely. I know you're big on martial arts studios. All the niches mm -hmm. that are, you know, maybe I find maybe there's easier to break into that than a high school that's already been yeah, taken people over. People aren't thinking about them. They're not thinking about the niche stuff as much. Yeah. If you can get, okay, I always say this to Matt, okay, when it comes to sports though, it's not a, you're not always going to get the data, but if you can get the data, Please do that because that'll make yes. this a heck of a lot easier too, and you can still use this with that process as well. Right. Um, so a lot of these leagues will have the students' information. So let's record a little hot tip video right after this right. about how to get the data. Great. Does that work? So y'all stay tuned. There's gonna be a follow-up video to this one. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you guys got a lot out of it.